Hey, Jody here. This topic is a 1G butt joint, cold rolled steel 11 gauge. That's about an eighth of an inch thick, just a little over three millimeters thick, flat position. That's called 1G. Let's go. Now, I'm going to knock a little bevel on this thing as well as clean it up. Even though it's cold rolled steel and will weld pretty good without doing anything to it, it needs a bevel. It's been my experience that one eighth of an inch is just a little bit thick to try to get full penetration on with a square groove well with no bevel. So I'm going to bevel it, clean it, I'm going to wipe the wire with acetone, I'm going to clean the pieces with acetone. They've got about a 30 degree bevel on them. I'm going to gap them about 332nd of an inch. I'm going to use this little rod for the gauge. 332nd is 2.4 millimeters. So I'm going to get a tack on each end, a kind of a big tack, like more than just the bare minimum because this being such a small piece, it's only about six inches long, it will try to really squeeze shut as I'm welding it if I don't have a decent size tack on each end. It's going to try to close shut anyway. So I'm trying to make sure that it's maintaining about a 332 gap as I put these tacks on the ends. And even so, because I know it's going to squeeze shut, I'm going to start in the middle and weld to one end, and then I'm going to weld the second half. What you see here are spacer plates to get it up off of the aluminum. I don't want to weld directly against that aluminum backing. I want to give it a little space, give it room for the root to sink in there a little bit. If it's dead against the aluminum, it has a, it has a dramatic chill effect on it. Sometimes it can work okay, but I want to see what it works like with a little bit of space to drop the root in there a little bit. So first thing I'm going to do is a lay wire technique. I'm just going to lay that 332 wire right into 332 gap and walk over it. I'm walking over it going straight forward and straight back, no side to side motion at all. And that helps push a little reinforcement through the back side, helps it to keep from flattening out or even sucking back. Normally, you know, if this was a pipe joint or whatever, I'd probably be using a 1 8 rod with a 1 8 gap, but this is 8 inch thick material. So I'm, I'm gapping it 332 and laying the 332 wire in there and seeing how that works. I'm doing this joint in two passes, mainly because I've just ha had poor results trying to do it in one. Now, unless you mix a little helium in with the gas or something, I mean, you can get full penetration with one pass, but it just seems to be inconsistent. It takes a lot of heat, really heats the metal up. I think it's, it's at, at this thickness, it's better to, to go at it with two passes. So that's the first pass. Yeah, I pushed a little bit of reinforcement through on the back side. Decent looking root there, it pushed it through. Now this rest of it is shrunk a little bit. It's much tighter, a much tighter gap. The 1 16th rod will fit in there, but a little bit loose, but not a whole lot of extra room in there. So I'm gonna use a 1 16th rod and I'm gonna just dip it in and out. Now I'm gonna keep the rod in that puddle pretty often. And that's sort of a key to pushing a little reinforcement through. You know, if you if you wait too long in between dips and let it keyhole way out, it can be real jagged with you. So I'm, I'm watching the, the very bottom, the very leading edge of that puddle. I'm keeping the rod in there pretty often so that it punches a little bit through there. I'm trying not to go hot enough to where it, it goes outside the bevel, but it's pretty darn close right there. It's trying to wash out there every now and then. It seems to be working okay. The proof will be in, in flipping it over and looking at the back side. So that's the root pass done. I've gone in different directions again because it's such a small piece. It just wants to draw shut. I thought it would be better to do it in two halves. So we flip it over here and kind of check it out. I got a little bit better shielding on that second half and it pushed through a little bit. Um, not a whole lot. But it's not sucked back. So this one, this next pass, the key to not having lack of fusion on a lay wire pass on the next pass is having it free from oxidation. So a nice hit with a flap disc and a wire wheel, and then we'll be able to lay a 1 8 wire in there and, and weave right over it and get a little reinforcement and not get lack of fusion. At least that's the goal anyway. So this is only around, uh, probably around 100 amps for this pass. You know, it doesn't take much. If you use much more than that, you'll melt all the way through it and disturb the root and also pull oxidation from the backside. So around 100 amps and, and moving along just about as quickly as you, you dare and still, you know, not leaving any, any rough points on the toes of the weld or anything will do the job. 
All right, let's do the other portion now after letting it cool off for a little while. You know, I always have to fight myself to let things cool and not get in too big a hurry. If you get things overheated, things don't flow the same, things get oxidized, you start pulling in some oxidation, maybe even melting through the backside if you don't let it cool a little while. And you don't want that. So I'm just doing sort of a Z weave right over that rod, keeping the rod in the puddle. Just a little bit of pressure on the rod, I'm not trying to feed any in there in this case, sometimes you do, but just trying to keep a little pressure on it so it stays in the puddle. And doing a little Z weave, watching the toes, trying to make the toes look pretty good, not leave any cold toes. Toes are the edge of the weld, the very edge where it joins into the base metal. Taper off. Now, because there always is the risk of lack of fusion with lay wire, I'm going to cut an etch and verify that what I thought I saw was really true. I didn't think I saw anything that looked like it were gonna, that was gonna be lack of fusion since the surface was clean, wire brushed, clean, free from oxidation, and it was flowing pretty well, but there's nothing like a cut and etch to prove out what you think is true. Because come, sometimes what you see isn't, isn't really what's true. So here's again is, is uh, what I was seeing near that cut and etch line where I cut and sectioned it, and there is the end result. Again, it's very possible to get lack of fusion with a lay wire technique if you're using too little current, too large a wire, especially on a T-joint or a lap joint fillet well where you're trying to drive down into a sharp corner all the way into the root of the joint. But in this case, it was sort of a flat area, just a groove well that I was filling up. So it worked okay. If you want to see that well, that video, it posted recently, it's called A Pretty Weld Is Not Always a Good Weld, and I'll link it up at the end of this video. If you're interested in learning more about this number eight cup or any other products that I have at weldmonger.com, that's how I support these videos. Visit weldmonger.com and shop around. Thanks for your support. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.